We're going to get started, everybody. Good morning. Welcome. Uh, I'm Mark Levine, a Manhattan Borough President. Come, come, come. Absolutely. Uh, people are eager to be part of this exciting day. We are talking about something big. I'm thrilled that we are joined by my colleague in government, State Senator Brian Kavanaugh. Thank you, Brian, for joining us right here. Well placed. Um, we are joined by um, the uh, Executive Director of Transportation Alternatives, Danny Harris. Thank you very much, Danny. Um, we are joined by uh, two leaders of the fabulous Gotham Park, uh, Nancy Kong and Rosa Chang. Uh, we are joined by Captain Jonathan Bulwer, President and CEO of the Seaport Museum. Um, I don't think Patrick Cannell is here, but I know we're expecting him. Uh, we're joined by Catherine McVeigh Hughes, uh, whose organizational affiliation today is? Financial District Neighborhood Association. Excellent. Um, and do we have someone from the RPA? I think they were going to join us, but they, and, and one or two others who will be um, uh, coming momentarily. And small business owner. Small, tell me your name again, sir. Marco Passanelli. Marco Passanelli, who, owner of? Passanella and son, and? Oh, do you want to come stand here? Okay, Regional Plan Association making a major entrance here. Awesome, thank you very much. Yeah, only ask softball questions, please. Um, all right, look at this, look at that thing. Robert Moses extended the FDR south of the Brooklyn Bridge in the 1950s, and he created a massive, noisy, ugly, dark barrier between the people of Lower Manhattan, we've even got the dog supporting us today, between the people of Lower Manhattan and the waterfront. And we are here today to say 80 years later, it is time to tear that viaduct down. We want to replace it with a beautiful new boulevard at street level, with multi-use lanes, with lush open space, with direct access to the waterfront, with unobstructed views of this gorgeous harbor. And to those of you who say it can't be done, we already did it. There used to be an elevated highway on the West Side Highway we tore that down in the 80s. Today, Hudson River Park is one of the most amazing public spaces in New York City. And it won't surprise you to hear that as soon as we tore it down on the west side, people started to talk about tearing down the FDR south of Brooklyn Bridge. This is not a new topic, not a new proposal. For 40 years, people have been looking at this. But we now have a window of opportunity that we didn't have before for several reasons. First of all, there's a massive resiliency project, the FIDI Seaport Coastal Resiliency Project happening along the length of this elevated viaduct. And to do these two projects together makes so much sense. There's so much potential synergy. Secondly and critically, our wonderful transportation secretary at the national level Pete Buttigieg, has created a new program that US DOT has never had before. It's called Reconnecting Communities. And it will fund, it will help fund exactly this kind of project. We're a perfect candidate for Reconnecting Communities. And there's an application deadline on September 28th. That is going to determine dozens of projects around the city that are going to get money to fund design and I believe engineering uh, for this kind of project. We need to act now. We want to seize this opportunity to do something big and bold. And I want to say I am thrilled by the breadth of support that this project has already accumulated over the years and that you're seeing on display today. Um, I just learned from Tom Harris, who's a board member of the Downtown Alliance, that they're already on record in supporting this. And you're now going to hear from 
an array of elected leaders who are out today to come behind this bold idea. And first, I would like to cue my friend, your state senator, Brian Kavanaugh. Thank you. All right. I'd like to you know, begin by thanking Mark and everybody at the Borough President's Office for really uh, thinking big here in Lower Manhattan and on so many issues. Uh, he really has uh, led the way, bringing uh, communities together and, you know, proposing large scale solutions to the very big problems we face in our communities. Um, you know, as, as Mark said, this uh, structure behind us really is a relic of a very different time. It's a time when it seemed okay to separate communities like this from our waterfronts, from our waterways. That's partly because at that time we viewed our waterways mostly as kind of, you know, industrial pathways. We, the, the East River and the Hudson River and most of our waterways in this way, the harbor, were toxic. There were industrial uses all along this river that made it such that people wanted to look away and not look toward the river. And certainly you didn't do much of what's happening now, which is, you know, people are kayaking, they're doing water sports. We're trying to get people to the water. We've got the Billion Oyster Project reinstalling uh, structures that will allow oysters to proliferate as they did in earlier generations. Um, it's important that we reconnect with our with nature, with our waterfront, so that people in our city can realize, you know, that that we're all part of a uh, of a biosphere that needs to be protected and nurtured. And of course, it was also a time when it was okay to. Robert Moses took great pleasure in lifting the cars above the hubbub of day-to-day -day life in our neighborhoods and our communities. This kind of plan and this kind of structure started here and proliferated across the country. Um, this is going to be very complicated. Uh, we will work with the borough president, with the transportation officials at the city, state, and federal level. Uh, but it's great that we are setting the table today, calling for this, and br bringing together a very broad swath of our community uh, in support of this. And I look forward to getting this done. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Senator. Thank you very much. Appreciate your remarks. And we know you have to leave. We won't feel bad. Yeah, he, he's got four simultaneous press conferences. Um, I would now like to call up uh, a, a great leader for transportation policy in this city, Danny Harris, the executive director of Transportation Alternatives. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Borough President Levine, and thank you, all of you. Uh, today we're here to talk about not just what Robert Moses built, but what every leader since has sustained. And today, under your leadership, we're saying that there's a new path forward for New York. And Borough President Levine, we're grateful for the work that you're doing, not just with this project, but to really make Manhattan a more people-focused city. We're seeing same conversations happening in the Bronx or on the Cross Bronx. We're seeing same conversations happening in Brooklyn about the BQE. It is high time that New York, our leaders in New York, put people first. For a hundred years, our city has made a decision to put cars in front of people. And the results of that have been disastrous. Transportation is the leading cause of greenhouse gas emissions in New York. Commute time is the single biggest indicator of moving people out of generational poverty. With ideas like this, of tearing down this highway, with congestion pricing, with the streets plan, we have real options about putting New Yorkers first and in doing so, making it a better city where everybody can live and thrive, where my children, my parents who are aging in place, this is not just something that has divided this community, it's divided the city. And it's time we take these highways down and thank you for your leadership. All right, thank you, so. Danny. Appreciate right. your words. Right. Wonderful. Thank you. Next up, I'd like to call Captain Jonathan Bolwer, President and CEO of the Seaport Museum. Good morning. Uh, Jonathan Bolwer here for South Street Seaport Museum and for Lower Manhattan. Um, I, I want to give a little historical perspective, which has been talked about already, but uh, the relic behind us, the elevated highway, the museum was actually involved in advocating for its removal as early as the early 80s. Uh, this is not a new idea. Uh, and I think you know, the core piece here, we're looking at a piece of infrastructure that was built at a time when this was a very different neighborhood. It was not a residential neighborhood, it was a commercial and industrial neighborhood at the end of a very industrial period. And it was constructed in that context, but we live here now. People live here in this community and the ability to connect with our waterways uh, is a new idea. This used to be an urban uh, industrial area, this waterfront, waterfronts around the city. So in that context, this was built. I say though now that with communities that are living here and need to be able to get to their waterfronts, that in that context, 
the Robert Moses FDR below the Brooklyn Bridge is of the past. Now, the biggest issue, though, I think, in facing us is not just how the community connects with its waters, but that the FDR, as it is comprised right now, stands in the way of effective resiliency planning for New York. And in that, I would say the FDR here is in the past. Resiliency is the future. It is time to take the FDR below the Brooklyn Bridge down to reconnect New York with its waterways. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, John. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oops. Next up, I'd like to call uh, the leader of one of the most exciting public space efforts in New York. We are reclaiming the land around the Manhattan side of the Brooklyn Bridge to become Gotham Park. And one of the founders of that effort, Rosa Chang, is here to say a few words. Thank you. Hi, everybody, and thank you, Mark, for leading this initiative because we see so much potential here. Gotham Park is an effort to help our communities that have long been underinvested, that are incredibly diverse, 64% BIPOC, 20% of families living below the federal poverty level, 20% seniors. And when we see the potential of all of this space, once we can reconnect to the waterfront, which we have been pushing for our entire existence, we see families coming back here because that is incredibly dark um, and uninviting and it does separate us from the water. It is an opportunity to reconnect um, and re-envision what the city can be for our communities that live right here and that have been so long underinvested. So we are so excited at this enormous push to make this happen right now and I believe that we can with yes, your leadership. Can. So yes, thank you. Thank you, Rosa. Excellent. Next up I'd like to call Catherine McVeigh Hughes, whose affiliation she's going to repeat so I don't mangle it. Come on up, Catherine. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm a director of the Financial District Neighborhood Association, and this is the most exciting news that we've heard in our neighborhood in a very long time and wholeheartedly support the taking down of the little used ramp of the FDR south of Brooklyn Bridge. We support our small business owners who you'll hear from in a moment. And this area where you stand today was absolutely devastated during Superstorm Sandy approximately 11 years ago. And it's very important that our community does have access to the waterfront and green spaces is something that we're very efficient at here in the financial district area. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Catherine. Um, uh, she doesn't want to speak, but I want to acknowledge that we're joined by a prominent downtown leader, Mariama James, who uh, is a Democratic district leader, and we are in your district leader yes, park, correct? Yes. Okay, give her a big round of applause. We appreciate you being here. Um, would anyone else like to say No. No, okay. Good, good, good. Yes, please. Hi, I'm Michael Kramer. I'm the president of the South Street Seaport Coalition. I was also the first chair of the Hudson River Park Conservancy Advisory Board. And what we did over at the Hudson River Park is possible over on the East River. So I want to endorse Mark's uh, initiative, and I want to say it's going to take a lot of planning, but we're, we're right behind him, and the community wants to see the water. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Michael. Excellent. All right. So uh, we're, we're, we're done our uh, speakers list. Any questions? Okay, so um, I believe there's a annual deadline coming up, September 28th, at USDOT, that the city uh, government, the mayor's office, would need to submit a proposal for. I've spoken to folks in City Hall and gotten uh, a, a very positive reaction, but part of the reason why we wanted to do this quickly is because uh, we're on a tight timeline. These grants uh, from USDOT, they're substantial, um, you know, potentially I think 100 million or more. Uh, they're really focused on uh, design and, uh, and engineering, but that's, that's a considerable hurdle in these projects. And uh, it's why we want to move now. I, uh, I don't want to uh, undersell the complexity of this project. Uh, there'll be many legal, environmental, uh, obviously financial, jurisdictional questions that we have to work through. Um, but now's the time, and we're confident that if we can get the infusion of resources from USDOT, that we'll be off and running. Do you think uh, incoming congestion 
sprites will hate help help your taste as well if you're hard spreading. I, I I think this is a fact that we really need to consider closely. Um, what what I didn't mention is that this part of the FDR is already the least used part of of the highway. Uh, I think it's something like 40 percent relative to just the stretch right north of the bridge and um, that opens up this possibility and potentially with congestion pricing there could be even fewer vehicles. Um, to the extent I've heard concerns in the neighborhood as you might expect it's about traffic impact and we got to look at that. Um, to me that doesn't detract from uh, the incredible potential here to create a wonderful new boulevard uh, with all the nice features that we described. So I do want to go to Marla, yes. Forgive me, oh my gosh, so sorry. I only know your voice, that's the problem. I don't have all the answers and part of what we want to happen now is you know, an examination of those questions. I don't think that backup is people who are going south of the bridge. I think that backup is people who are going into the local street grid or maybe going north on the FDR. Um, I mean, th there is a broader opportunity uh, beyond even just this viaduct. There's one flyover that is not even open to traffic. It's being used for parking. We have a highway flyover off the Brooklyn Bridge being used for parking for uh, vehicles from One Police Plaza, which does not seem like the highest and best use of, of something like that. Um, but uh, I think that we have another challenge of overcrowding uh, uh, because so many pedestrians and bicyclists are using it. And you know we should probably talk about whether we could have a new way for pedestrians and bicyclists to access the bridge. Have you talked about this, Danny? Then he had to leave. Okay, I'm gonna bet he talked about it. Um, this is a question that people have raised when I've asked them about the teardown. It's like, while you're looking at that, can you reduce the congestion for the pedestrians and bicyclists? Maybe we could do that too. There's a lot to consider here. Um, I don't have all the answers, uh, but uh, I would expect nothing less from you, Juliet, and asking the right questions. I don't think they're using this viaduct. I think that they are, go oh, they're not even allowed to. Well, there you go, thank you. Thank you, that's why you gotta have the district leader here. Uh, yeah, so, so problem solved. Come, come to all my press conferences, please, Mariama. Uh, was there another hand up I saw? Okay, yes. From the Brooklyn Bridge to the Battery Tunnel. Replace, we want to replace it with a, a street level boulevard, a surface boulevard. I don't know. It will not be cheap, though. I don't know. It will not be fast. <laughs> but it can be done. We're eligible for really important early stage help from the U.S. Department of Transportation. We're already doing a billion dollar plus resiliency project on the waterfront, which is going to be spectacular. This is the time to do it. We can get this done. Okay, Juliet, yes. Presumably, yes. Yeah, presumably. All right, before we have any more hardball questions, thank you so much, everybody, for coming out. Oh, yes, forgive me. Okay. Um, okay. Venimos uh, aquí, activistas oficiales electos, para exigir algo bastante impresionante que es ya sacar esto, esta carretera, que ustedes ven que tanto tapa la vista, que tapa acceso al río, que lleva ahí 80 años, ya llegó la hora de sacar eso para mejorar esta comunidad, para mejorar el acceso al río. Esto se puede hacer, ahora es el momento, hay fondos federales,
que hay que entregar la solicitud de aquí al final de septiembre. Así que venimos hoy a exigir que se haga una vez y para siempre. Are there any other languages? <laughs> All right. We're going to do this in Greek. All right. Thank you so much, everybody.